Hi, this is Dr. Emily Park. In the next Functional Health Minute, I want to talk about the most common nutrient deficiencies that I'm seeing in my practice. So as you guys already know, in functional medicine, we do take a deeper dive with advanced laboratory testing, and I am taking a really good deep dive into all of the nutrients that I find important for health. So the most common nutrient deficiencies that I'm seeing on blood testing, I would say the top one is vitamin D. Um, it really, the statistic really is true. You know, about 80% of people are either deficient or less than optimal in vitamin D. And depending on the sourcing, there are different opinions on what the normal or optimal levels for vitamin D are. Some labs are marking below 20 is low. Some labs are marking below 30 is low. And that's for the vitamin D, the specific vitamin D I'm talking about on those levels is the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 um, that you'll see on your lab report. Nonetheless, there is some good data to say that about 40 to 60 is considered an optimal level for vitamin D. And there are also some studies to support pushing the vitamin D a little bit higher, maybe to like 60 to 80 for a period of time if you've got um, inflammatory bowel disease, for example, or another inflammatory type of a process that can actually be helpful. So vitamin D is not just a vitamin, right? It's a fat soluble uh, vitamin. So it's, and it's also a hormone. There is a receptor for vitamin D in every single cell of the body. So it plays a major role in all of your hormones. Um, it plays a role in so many different cellular reactions in the body. The most common that people think about are of course bone health, right? Because part of vitamin D's job is to help control your calcium absorption, um, you know, from your diet, from your food. And so bone health is really important, but brain health is also really crucial for vitamin D. And of course, immune system health and inflammation. Those are like the top ones we think about. But we also need adequate vitamin D levels, you know, for example, for our thyroid to work properly. Um, vitamin D also plays a role in blood sugar balance. So it really is an important one to make sure that you've, you've got right. So vitamin D is probably my top nutrient deficiency that I see in the practice. I would say the second most common one um, are, starting, are starting to be the minerals. And I see uh, magnesium a lot, a lot. I would say about 80% of people aren't you know, optimal on their red blood cell magnesium, or that's the storage form of magnesium levels. And I would also say zinc um, is another common one I'm seeing as well. And then um, some of the B vitamins. So it, and B vitamins are all over the board. I see a lot of B1, which is thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B12, and folates that are either actual laboratory low or, you know, less than optimal levels. And, you know, in some people, when you get to less than optimal levels, even though you're not technically low per the lab standards, you can start to have symptoms. And I can even see, um, you know, some other laboratory evidence that, it's not optimal for you. Um, for example, if let's say someone's B12 or folate is in the normal range, but it's you know on the low side, and then I take a look at their CBC, their blood counts, and I see, ooh, the sizes of red blood cells are starting to get a little bit big. So there's you know maybe an elevated MCV, MCHC, MCH. And, and so that's to giving me a clue like, hey, like you, you're struggling to make the appropriate size red blood cells. And the first thing I think about when you have big red blood cells is you have to look at um, what are your B vitamins doing. Um, and then iron is another nutrient deficiency and it works the opposite way. Um, if you are iron deficient, um, you will actually make smaller red blood cells. And so all those values I just said were high, um, you know, for a, a B vitamin deficiency like B12, folate, B6, B2, for example, um, are actually low when it comes to iron deficiency. So you make small red blood cells, so all those will be low. Um, and then of course, whether you um, are making small red blood cells or big red blood cells, eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna stop making as many red blood cells and you're going to become anemic. So you can, everyone you know, kind of knows about anemia from iron deficiency and the most common cause of iron deficiency, of course, you have to think about you know, blood loss, right? Like, so is a woman you know, having really heavy periods, you know, is someone having you know, uh, things like chronic nosebleeds? Um, is there bleeding going on in the GI tract? And you may know about it, like if you have something like um, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, you may actually you know, be seeing blood, um, or it may be occult, meaning like you might not even know um, that it's there, that you're having an issue with it. Um, 
but, uh, and it can also be dietary, right? Like you're just not taking enough iron in and then just having GI inflammation will also impair your ability to absorb certain nutrients. Iron is for sure one of them. The next most common one I see in that area is zinc. Um, so again, just to kind of wrap up the most common nutrient deficiencies I'm seeing recently are, you know, vitamin D, um, the B vitamins and the, a lot of the minerals. So like iron, uh, magnesium and zinc are really common. Not that those are, you know, comprehensive. I see a lot of other nutrient deficiencies, but those are, I would say the most common ones. So if you have a functional medicine provider, we, you know, you know, we are checking these things for you, but even if you don't, these are like, like easy things you could ask for your primary care provider to order for you. Just ask for a vitamin D3, a B12, a folate, a B6, a B1, a B2 um, on the B vitamins. And then you could ask for, you know, an iron panel, of course. Um, and then you might even also ask to check an iodine. Iodine is another one that sneaks in there um, that I'm seeing a fair amount of, of deficiency in. And by the way, if you do get levels back that are low or less than optimal, you do, you do need to have some supervision with replacement because a lot of these um, nutrients, too much, it can be bad, just like too little can be bad. So you can overdo it on iron. You can overdo it on iodine. You can overdo it on you know, vitamin D. You can overdo it on zinc. You can overdo it on all of, all of the nutrients and you can create imbalances and issues that you didn't have before. Um, so just a, just a heads up there. Cause I'm, I'm mentioning some of these because you know, obviously um, with the virus that's out and about, um, a lot of people are, you know, reading articles and they're like, you know, doing extra zinc supplementation, and extra D supplementation. And it's not that that's a bad thing for a short period of time. Like if you did think you were exposed or you're starting not to feel well, like, of course, you know, you can take higher doses for a couple of weeks. Um, but you really don't want to do it for very long because you can actually create other imbalances and create problems that you didn't have before by, you know, just trying to support your immune system long-term. So it's always great to get supervision or at least, you know, check your lab values to make sure you're not really high in something that you've been supplementing with. And if you are supplementing um, and you see that your levels still aren't great, then that really should be a clue to you. I mean, you need to look at nutrition and you need to look at gut function. What um, how, you know, what's going on in the gut? How are you doing digesting and absorbing your food nutrients if you are eating a healthy diet? Um, so those are just kind of clues. So nutrient deficiencies can, um, you know, replacing them can be really, really helpful. And of course, figuring out the root cause as to why are you deficient to begin with? Is it an intake problem? Is it a digestion problem? Is it an inflammation problem? Those are probably the top three um, that I see. Or are you, you know, are you, uh, is there a use problem? Is your body, um, you know, using up a lot of it for one reason or another? So this is Dr. Emily Park with your Functional Health Minute.